if you're in any kind of leadership position, you've got to keep the kettle boiling and you've got to be thinking about this now, not when it's too late. One of the best hiring tactics you can do is take someone out for a meal, for lunch, and see how they are in that informal setting, not in a formal interview environment. This helps you gauge whether there's a good match, not just in skills, but in, in vision, values, principles, ethics, character, everything. Just because somebody is good at something doesn't mean they should be promoted into leadership positions. So what is your backup plan? If you think that promoting from within is always your safest bet, you might be setting your firm up for failure. You work in an accounting firm, might be your firm. You're in a position of leadership, responsibility. You're a boss, you're an owner, you're a partner, senior partner, managing partner. You head up a department, an office, a team. Let me ask you a question. Are you comfortable with your leadership pipeline? Are you comfortable with what's coming up behind you and who's ascending into leadership roles? Here's a harsh truth. Your best people might not be the best fit to lead your firm into the future. Just because somebody is good at something doesn't mean they should be promoted into leadership positions. So what is your backup plan? If you think that promoting from within is always your safest bet, you might be setting your firm up for failure. In fact, what if I told you that your firm's next leader isn't even on your radar? Worse, they might be at a competitor's firm. They might be ready to poach your clients while you scramble to fill the leadership void. And if that sounds terrifying, it should. We're in a talent crisis here in the accounting world and complacency is the silent killer of firms thinking that your brand is good enough and your talent pipeline will always be full. And when people come in, we'll all push up to the top and your leadership problems will be solved. And if you're banking on your current team to carry your firm's legacy forward without looking outside for fresh blood, you might be in for a rude awakening. Today, we're going to explore why external succession planning isn't just an option. It's a necessity for any firm that wants to stay relevant. And today on the Accounting Talent Podcast, we're diving into why your internal talent might not be enough and why ignoring the external succession planning route is a potential recipe for disaster. We'll explore why external talent could be your firm's lifeline for growth and ongoing success. But this is part two of one. So let's have a recap on the last episode. If you missed it, I highly recommend you go back, give it a listen here on the show, because we covered some critical ground that lays a foundation for what we're discussing today. And in that episode, we focused on internal succession planning, the process of grooming your existing talent to step into leadership roles, positions of responsibility. We talked about why this approach is really, really valuable particularly when it comes to preserving your firm's unique culture and ensuring a seamless transition when key leaders step down, which they will. We'll talk about why they will. But remember the people on the inside, they get your firm's culture. They bleed the DNA of your firm. And so they're natural successes for leadership roles. I did share with you in the last episode some eye watering stats that really drive home the importance of this. For instance, did you know that less than 50% of accounting firms have any kind of formal succession plan in place. That's pretty frightening. And yet 80% of those same firms expect to face succession challenges in the next five years. It's a staggering disconnect, isn't it? It could spell disaster for firms that are not prepared. And these numbers paint a clear picture. Many firms are oblivious to the required transitions in leadership that lie ahead if you're going to stay competitive and relevant and keep growing. On the last show, we also dug into best practice. In the last show, we also dug into internal succession planning, best practices, how the top firms are not just identifying those stars of the future, those high potential employees, but they're actively investing in their development. It may even mean paying them more to keep them because if it costs you $20,000 pounds to keep somebody, it's going to cost you a lot more to replace them if they go. Think about that. So these firms are, are creating the internal succession plan. They're creating leadership pipelines where the talent is nurtured, prepared for future roles through mentoring, targeted training, real-world leadership experiences, exposing them to more responsibilities and helping them get through those. It's not just about technical skills either. It's about building the emotional intelligence, the strategic thinking, the commercial awareness, the vision needed to lead a firm lead an office, lead a department, lead a service line through the complexities of today's business environment. 
And we didn't shy away from the challenges either in the last episode. We discussed how internal succession planning, it isn't always smooth sailing. There are risks of complacency where the long-serving employees might feel entitled to leadership roles without putting in the work to truly earn it or developing, say, the business development skills that is required to step up into a leadership role. And of course, there's that delicate balance of ensuring the right cultural fit while maintaining a rigorous merit-based approach. It's not just who's been in the role the longest. So if any of this is ringing bells for you, and if you're thinking right now how to secure your firm, your department, your your office, if their future by nurturing internal talent, make sure you check out that episode. It's packed with insights and examples that are essential for any firm leader serious about succession planning. You can find it right in our podcast feed. But today we are shifting gears and looking at the other side of the coin, external succession planning. There are two ways to do this. You look internally and promote those people up, or you look externally. And this is where things get really interesting, especially if you're facing challenges that your internal team isn't equipped to handle. So stick around. This is going to be the conversation that you won't want to miss. Again, welcome to the Accounting Talent Podcast. I'm Rob Brown, your guide to the maze of talent culture and recruitment issues and opportunities and solutions in the accounting world. And today we're talking succession planning with its two prongs of keeping it all going. And we've nailed that internal aspect now. I've given you a recap of that and how nurturing your own people can ensure that continuity and success of your firm for years to come. You've got to have that in place if you're going to be bought, if you're going to be acquired, or if you want to acquire, or you're interested in some of the private equity money that is out there, you've got to have succession plans in place. You've got to show that your firm is equipped to grow and sustain its current growth path. But you probably realize there's another side to the succession planning coin, and that's just as vital as the internal in today's rapidly changing environment. And uh, that's right, we're talking about the external piece, what's on the outside, who is out there. And trust me, if you are in a leadership position at a large accounting firm, oh, you know what, any accounting firm, this is one episode you can't afford to miss. Let's get right to it. Uh, Let's revisit the urgency of succession planning. Talked about it in the last episode. Let's take a moment to remind ourselves why this whole succession is so crucial. Last time I I shared with you the alarming stat that less than 50% of accounting firms have a succession plan and 80% face serious challenges. I've reiterated that this episode. We're in a period where 10,000 baby boomers hit retirement age every single day. And if you think the wave isn't going to hit your firm, think again, whether through retirement, think about the reasons why people leave retirement, unexpected departures, uh, health issues. You need to bring in fresh expertise. Leadership challenges are coming. If you don't have a plan, you're setting up your firm for a lot of turmoil or worse, failure. So this is why we're saying succession planning needs to be key, needs to be pivotal in your planning. And it, it's a game changer. You've got to look outside the firm because, if, like most firms, what's on the inside is not going to be enough. They say, don't they, what got you here won't get you there. So we're going to look outside your firm for leadership and succession because, let's face it, there are times when the talent you need is just not available internally or you can't get them there fast enough. And maybe your firm is looking to break into new markets. Maybe you're tackling emerging challenges like digital transformation or artificial intelligence, or you've got new sectors you can break into. and You just want to bring in some fresh ideas into your leadership team. This is where external succession planning can be a game changer. And when it's done right, bringing in that external leader, it can inject new energy, drive innovation, bring a strategic edge or a, a group of skills that might not be achievable by your current team. And it's about finding that right person who not only has the skills, the experience, but can bring in that new perspective that can propel your firm forward. So I want to talk about best practices in external succession planning. What are the good firms doing? It's not just about hiring somebody with a fleshy resume, somebody that you think's got a good track record. The firms that get this right, they're very deliberate. They're very strategic in the process. So number one thing is to start early. Think strategically, start early. You're thinking about the roles you're going to need in the next two, three, even five years. And really important lesson, well before the leadership change is on the horizon, 
you've got to give yourself the luxury of having time to find that perfect candidate or even a good candidate striving for perfection it may be a little hard, but finding a good candidate and rather than having that pants on fire rush to get somebody in, and we have run an episode, me and my co-host Jeff Phillips on what happens if you do lose somebody urgently and you've got to replace them? What do you do in the next 30 days and what do you do more long-term? But here we're saying start at least so you're not rushing into a decision that might not be the best fit for your firm just to fill a warm seat. I have seen firms where the leadership team actively scouts for potential external candidates, even when there's no immediate need. So they're thinking ahead all the time. They're, they're earmarking these people. They're constantly on the lookout for talent that aligns with their long-term strategic goals. So start early, think strategically. I know the best practice to, is to define clear roles and expectations. Uh, so you've got a crystal clear understanding about what you need from an external leader. This isn't just filling a gap. It's about advancing the firm strategy, not plugging a gap now, but filling a seat for future strategy. One firm I know identified that they needed to ramp up their M&A mergers, acquisitions, capability to remain competitive. They could get by now and maybe even for the next year, but they saw that they were going to need to fill this gap. They didn't just hire any leader. They specifically sought someone out that was a fit for their firm with a proven track record in M&A who could bring in the new business and elevate the firm standing in that area. And they nurtured them. They built a relationship with them. Grooming's the wrong word, but you know what I mean. They, uh, they went after this person in a good way on a long-term basis, and they eventually landed that person. You've got to ensure culture fit as well. We, we hear a lot about culture these days. We talk about on this show. Technical skills are not enough. Crucial is the cultural fit. Get my, my tongue around that one. Cultural fit is crucial. You need someone who understands, respects the unique soup of your firm that everyone's swimming in or the Kool-Aid that everyone's drinking, the DNA, the values, the vision. I've seen cases where firms make the mistake of hiring an external leader that looks great on paper or has a, a wonderful personality, a wonderful skill set, but they didn't mesh with the firm's culture. They didn't chime with them and it created friction, disrupted workflows, ultimately led to a change in leadership that was required six months later. And the firms that succeed in this are those that prioritize cultural fit as much as they do technical competence. And so to ensure a fit, make sure you involve all the key stakeholders in the hiring process and let these current leaders meet with the candidate, not just in formal interviews, but in casual settings as well. One of the best hiring tactics you can do is take someone out for a meal or lunch and see how they are in that informal setting, not in a formal interview environment. This helps you gauge whether there's a good match, not just in skills, but in, in vision, values, principles, ethics, character, everything. Uh, another thing you've got to think about in best practice with external succession planning is a hybrid approach. So there's no one way to get this right. Uh, one firm I know, uh, an external leader was brought in alongside the internal leaders and they blended together all the, the fresh ideas, the deep institutional knowledge, and they brought in actually an external COO to complement their existing team, a chief operations officer. And uh, this external hire brought a new operational efficiencies, technological innovations, and the internal leaders got these changes implemented in a way that was consistent with the firm's established culture and client relationships by weaving them in. And it was a much more seamless transition that strengthened the firm's position in the market. So they're looking at external skills and personnel to complement the internal skills and personnel. What happens if you ignore this? I've been very strong in the message here that you've got to go inside and you've got to go outside. But if you do ignore it, the external side of the equation, the risk can be significant. In today's environment, talent is at a premium. You've heard that a lot on this show. There's no way around it, and it's not going to let up. There are less and less people taking accounting degrees. People are still leeching out of accounting. There are some big layoffs in the big firms, so you might pick up some things there, but the competition for those people is going to be very fierce. So we know we're facing a talent crunch, and 
we know that there's a lot of competition for the top talent that is available. So you've got to go outside the firm and you've got to compete in that marketplace. You might find yourself scrambling to fill critical leadership roles if you are unprepared with your internal candidates. And I've heard stories of firms that have critical positions unfilled, even though they've advertised vacancies for 12, 18 months. What is that doing? Not just for the quality of, of, experience you can offer your clients, but what is that doing for everyone else having to pick up that workload? So the consequences of not having a robust external succession planning plan in place can be dire. We're talking about a loss of clients or a loss of quality of service to those clients, a, a drop in employee morale, potential collapse of the firm's reputation, errors in audits and work. That's not good to anybody. You simply can't afford to stumble through any kind of leadership transition. So your competitors are certainly not going to wait for you to get it all together. They'll be ready to poach your clients. And if you've got any turbulence in staff morale, they're going to be ready to poach your people as well. The moment they sense that instability, that uh, resistance that your people are feeling. So let's wrap this up. This is the call to action. Your takeaway, if you like, succession planning is not just keeping the lights on when someone leaves. It's about setting your firm up for long-term success, whether that means promoting from within or bringing in new talent from the outside. I'm not pretending that bringing in external talent is easy. Those lateral hires, those strategic hires, those senior hires, they're hard. And we'll talk in other episodes about how to get around that, building your employer brand. As a matter of fact, we can talk about that. Let me come to that in a moment. What I'm talking about here is setting your firm up for long-term success, looking at within, bringing talent in from the outside. And if you're in any kind of leadership position, you've got to keep the kettle boiling and you've got to be thinking about this now, not when it's too late. So here's where I might be able to help you. Because if this discussion here is making you think about your firm's future, let's have a chat because I'm Rob Brown and I help firms like yours Tell their talent success stories, success stories of why your place is a great, wonderful environment to work. These are the stories that attract to retain the best people in the business. So if you want to sharpen that, your edge in the talent wars, or if you're ready to create a compelling narrative that shows why your firm is the place to be, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I work with a couple of accounting firms and I interview their people about why they love working there, why they joined, why they've stayed, why they've resisted the temptation to go anywhere else. And there's nothing like employee advocacy and getting your own people to tell the stories about why they love working there and how they've grown their team and how they came in and how they were made to feel welcome. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. Let's have a chat about how we can showcase your firm strengths and ensure you're not just surviving, but thriving in today's competitive talent landscape. Have a great day. Think about external and internal succession planning. Reach out if you want to have a conversation. And I'll see you on the next episode of the Accounting Talent Podcast.